Okay. I am excellent right now. We'll pop the intro. All right, folks, <clears throat> we're back in the lab, back in the studio. I'm Rob. He's Rick. This is the Captain's Law Podcast and YouTube show. What's up, my man? What's going on, Brody? Good, man. Special guest on here. Yes, sir. Mr. Dennis D.C. Rawls Jr. What's going on? Good, good, sir. What's happening, fellas? What's up, y'all? Good, man. Uh, absolutely ecstatic to have you on here, man. Uh, yes, man it's a pleasure to be on here. Mr. Rawls, owner of Upscale Tonsorial. Did I say that right? Tonsorial, that's right. Tonsorial Parlor and owner of B and E Company is that it's barbecue, barbecue everything, barbecue everything. Mm -hmm. Yep, barber and grill master. Where, yep, where, where, yep. where do you where do you find the time? <laughs> Every day. Every day. Every day, seven days a week, man. I'm working. I'm doing something with one of these businesses while intertwining with family. Um, that's what I do. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, everybody out here is, you know, is trying to keep their head above water, keep the mortgage right. paid and, you know, make the wife and the kids happy. Um, fortunately, I'm in two different professions where I love what I do. Um, I have my ups and downs with them, but, you know, both of my professions bring me peace to a to a certain degree. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so you Rick, you know, Rick brought you in, man. He said you said you was a good guy, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's my fur yeah. brother in law, if that's a thing. That's the only reason why I say he's my fur brother in law or my fur brother is because my dog and his dog are brothers. So correct. Mm. Yeah. Sweet, sweet. Two, Connie two, Corsos. Uh yep. Connie Corsos. Uh, Queen, shout out, shout out to Tim McNeil of Tim Queen, Queen City Connie Queen Corsos. City, Connie Corso. Yeah. If you're looking for a good dog, an excellent dog, go ahead and shout him out. Yes, so go sir. ahead and check him out. Appreciate They're it. pretty sweet. So you know, I so you know, I, I live around the corner from your barbershop. What's crazy is I just came from the CVS about two days ago uh -huh. and I actually rolled by there. I was like, I didn't know it was a barbershop right here. Are you seeing and, and I yeah, I live, <laughs> I live the next street over. I live, and I look. It, it was like a, it was like a middle of the week, so it wasn't it wasn't you know popping like that. I mean, somebody was in there cutting, but y'all was it was like two or three people in there chilling, right? And I was like, I said, all right, well, you know, if my bob ever, you know, if he ever slip, at least I know I ain't got to drive far. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, right. Hey man, well, praise praise be to God, we've been open for eight years. Um, That's what's up. This October 2022, it'll be nine years. Um, mm. So we we've definitely been doing a lot of stuff. I would say in the community, um, we've done we we've done free haircuts for all the elementary schools around Benjamin Tasker, uh, Samuel mm, Ogle, that's what's up. Um, Bowie High School and Bowie State. Um, this past well, last summer in 2021, we were one of the official sponsors of uh, Bowie Day that was done in Old Bowie. Um, you know, I'm real real big on trying to get the name out there. Now I know we can't reach everybody. It's a shame that I wasn't able to even to reach you, which you you know living in the in the neighborhood, I could say. Um, but I hear that a lot. You know what I mean? It's times I go to 7-Eleven, get me a cold water or a cup of coffee, and people are like, oh, that's a barbershop up there? And I'm like, yeah, we've been here for some years, you know, and I've done bulk mail listing. So you probably threw yours in the trash, Rob. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I ain't, hey, look, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I, I go through that mail quick, and I be like, <laughs> man, right. wait, if I ain't signed up for it, they be going in the trash, man. I'm like, but, I ain't um, mad at you, you know. But yeah, we, we just moved around here, but it'd be two years in March. So um okay. my barber who who cuts kind of down the street in the same shop as saying as the giant off 450. Okay. Um he was actually cutting in um in uh what's that uh new in new style over there and um in what yeah, into into style, whatever, whatever it's called. Right, right there on 450 with a home depot and all that is. Yeah, that's in style uh, barber shop. Yeah, um, yeah, he was I, cutting I know that owner as well. Yeah, he was they was cutting he was cutting in there first and then he left and went to uh one of the little uh suites over there mm -hmm. in that that building behind the BP gas station. And then and then they moved into the little salon plaza next to the giant. Okay. Across from the giants. So he been even cutting my hair about eight years. Shout out to uh groom theory. Uh okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. But let's get into it, man. Um tell us, man, how how'd you what compelled you to want to be a barber slash grill master? Um, I'll start off with the barbering. 
Um, man, I uh, used to have a lawn company when I was a kid. And um, using a weed a weed eater is an art. You know what I mean? I'm sure y'all ever seen them all <laughs> get that joint upside down and they, you know what I'm saying? They do the edging the and the trimming and all of that. Using a weed eater is a, uh, it's an art. Uh, cutting the grass. I know me and my friends used to have uh, lawn wars, trying to cut checkers in the grass, make it look like baseball fields and stuff, and come back to school on Monday, see how many uh, yards we were able to cut over the weekend. I used to draw a lot. Um, so it just, art, competitiveness is something that's always been a part of me. You know what I mean? And so with the art, um, I, I, when I say I like I used to draw and everything, I, I just felt like it was something else I wanted to get into. I knew I couldn't be no Picasso or nothing like that. Wasn't never good with paintbrushes and free art like that. So it got to a point where I uh, started picking up clippers. I would say I'd be out and I just started visioning different hairstyles, different haircuts and things like that. So I would come home and practice on myself. And I remember, man, I was in middle school. No, elementary school. I messed myself up real, 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 real bad. <laughs> very, yeah, very, very, very. I think bad. everybody has that story with oh, that. Fucking themselves up. I, uh, you know, I used to ask my father for some clippers. I was like, man, if you buy me some clippers. He's like, what you need clippers for? We can go to the barber shop. So I took a razor and I tried to shake myself up. I'm bald headed now. Um, I tried to shake myself up and I, I took all this off, like the whole front, everything. Mm. And my father was like, you just not going to stop this barber and stuff, are you? And um, you know, I grew up in Landover, you know, so uh Landover, Landover. So my barber was my barber was pretty cool, you know. <laughs> I used to go to Champ's barber shop back in the day over by the shop was off MLK. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I told him when I was probably like eleven or twelve, like man, I want to cut hair, I want to cut hair. And he was like, All right, well, you know, holler at me after high school, see if you're still interested. And so throughout high school, I started cutting my friends, started cutting my brothers. I remember uh I messed up my best friend. Ninth grade year, it was first week. We had we had a we had a football game that week, and I messed him up. I, I was like, "Man, let me cut your head. Let me cut your head." I went too low on it, and he was bam near ball. Mm -hmm. my, my man, I called his mother. My mother, man, my play mother. She cursed me out. His father, his father, she said, "You better not ever pick up no clippers again. You didn't you didn't mess my baby's head up." And his father, his father was just like. You was dumb enough to let him do it. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, Shout out to Pops. You know, he was like, hey, it'll, it'll grow back. And the whole while home, his father just frying him. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm so, um, but that that right there started me to cutting hair. Like, you know, to be able to take that much criticism, get fried like that, and know I messed up and still wanted to get back to it. And, you know, like all the barbers in my, around my way, the jokers had money growing up. You know what I mean? Or at least at the time, money I thought was money. You know, they had, yeah. Ooh, they had I like nice cars, they had the rims. They was, you know, I would say that I was intrigued with a lot of the things that uh, a child probably shouldn't be intrigued with. You know, the the liquor, the girls, and 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 shooting dice and stuff like. I was I was exposed to that growing up, so I was like, oh, this is tight. You know what I mean? These jokers, they having a good time. I want to be able to make my own schedule. Be my yeah. own boss. It's, yeah, you know, have money to get Jordans whenever I want. But you know, fast forward to today, I still love my craft. But you know, it's more to life than that. It's definitely a lot more to life than that. So, um, and if you want to know about the barbecue thing, when I was in college, um, I was a part of the uh, DC Met Club, which is called the DC Metropolitan Club. So what they do is from Morehouse, Spillman, and Clark, and um, they would just get everybody together, like, hey, uh, you know, they do a bunch of mixers or olive branches and be like, hey, this is everybody from your hometown. We're going to have a big cookout. Next thing I know, I'm we're doing a meet and greet. And I, I see a cat that I saw that I had met when I first got to school. Just joke, you know, say, hey, I'll be right back. Pass me some damn tongs. And nigga never came. <laughs> you threw them shits in your head. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He threw me some tongs and he never came back. And I'm like, all right. Here we go. So I'm over there I'm cooking ribs, pork chops, and steaks, mm. and burgers, and hot dogs. And everybody mm. was like, hey, man, that John was good. What'd you do to it? I'm over there trying to whip this up, whip that up, make little mm. sauces. And, and then I like, man, this is good. So from that, that's how that started with me. It seemed like every time there was a function, people were asking, hey, you want a grill? You, you want a grill? 
It didn't matter whether it was, you know, fall semester, spring semester, I was on the grill. When I came home, I started throwing cookouts with my friends. I was on the grill. Um, started watching Pitmasters. I was like, you know what? One day I want to enter into competitions. Mm. Um, I went to one competition, didn't even place, got so discouraged, never been back. So then I was like, you know what? I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to stick with just cooking and see, you know, if I can find a, a group of people that like my ribs, like my chicken and, and things like that. And from that, I was like, well, I'm out here supporting this company, that company, buying their sauces, buying their rubs. I need to create my own. Mm-hmm. Um, never really thought about really turning it into a business. So once again, I'm in the kitchen. I'm mixing this, mixing that. Get a nice flavor. And I'm giving out my barbecue sauce with all the meals. And people are like, hey, that's that's pretty good. You got it for sale. So went to Walmart, bought some mason jars and came home, made some barbecue sauce, started giving it to people. Um, next thing I know, I'm selling barbecue sauce on my truck. And it wasn't even for no money, to be quite honest with you. A lot of times I really gave it away. Um, but then it got to a point I was like, you know, a lot of people keep asking about this. I'm going to get it bottled, get it labeled. And, and see about getting it in stores. And eventually, you know, that's that's what I did. You know, got that together, put that in stores. And after that, came up with my own dry rub seasoning, you know, and bottled that, got this together, and got that in stores. And, you know, here you go. Now I run two businesses on a daily basis. That's what I'm talking that's about. That's what I'm talking about. What, what, what college was that? Morehouse College. Okay, okay. Shout out to Morehouse. That's what's yes, up, man. Yes, what's, what stores are your, your sauces and your uh, rub in? I am in Giant, only Giant right now. Um, I am in 69 Giants in the area, the mm, metropolitan area. Um, I've also just been put in West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. Mm, that's what's up. Hey, shout out to you, bro. bro. And I've had the seasoning, and I had the barbecue sauce, and it is fire. It's busting. It's busting. I'm like, I'm I'm like I like use it, it, but I've used it as, a, as soon as he gave it to me, because we exchanged. I gave him some of that lovey's mumbo sauce. Shout out to Lovey's. Oh, yeah, I'm out of that, by the way. <laughs> hey, look, hey, hey, we all, we all out. <laughs> it's coming. I got bottles coming. I've been waiting on this shit about six months. It's the it's distributors, but it's coming. So anyway, but um, it's 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 official, bro. It's official. It's official. Bro. Okay, I, okay. I, it's some definitely good stuff. I'm definitely, I do have a little bit left, and I'm saving that for, because I did it on ribs and salmon. Mm. But um, I'm going to do chicken, and I want to do a pork butt with it. Okay, okay. You know, we're, we're a barbecue house. Nigga. We use barbecue sauce on everything. <laughs> like, <laughs> and anything you would use ketchup on is barbecue sauce. So You see, you the type of customers I want. You know what I mean? <laughs> point period. French fries. I'd be, be like, nah, nah. There you go. BBQ sauce. We don't even want no ketchup. Shit. There you go. I'll be walking into people trying to introduce them to my sauce. No, I don't use barbecue sauce. So I'll fucking get out of the way then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just for people who want it, damn it. That's yeah. What's up. That's what's up. So, um, is this, so you, so being a bar, is this something that you always wanted? Well, I know you went into it, the barber thing, but as far as the grill master side, do you, do you think there's something that, you pictured yourself doing as a child, or you just think, like no. you said earlier, it just fell in your lap. You just ran it, with it. it. It fell in my lap. Um, it was out of nowhere. Uh, and another thing that kind of got me onto that was I used to club promote when I was in college. Um, one of the guys I was working for, he went to Clark. He was from Houston. Um, this joker at the let out, he would pull his pickup up, and he had a, a grill on the back of it. You know what I mean? And he was, was cranking ribs and chicken. At the end of at the club, you know what I mean? After the let out. And not only was he just making money off of the door and a percentage of the bar, he breaking me off my little money for doing being on his street team, passing out flyers. And but he out there, you know, he got another dude running his grill. And um, I mean one night, I'm going out there to get some chicken. Dope boy walk up and he was like, Hey man, it's a long ass line. He walked in front of everybody. He was like, Hey man, I give you seven hundred dollars for everything right now. Let me make these niggas buy for me. I was like, God damn, man. Mm. I'm about to go to IHOP. Mm. <laughs> All right, so, but you know, to see to see something like that, I was like, man, mm, this is an idea. Yeah. When I came back home, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna um, I'm buy me a grill when I get back up top. You know, I'm gonna buy me a grill. I'm gonna try to hit the let out. So when I moved back home, it was still. I think it was. Was it love still then? And oh nine was it love or had, had it turned to dream by that time? 
Uh, it was, it was, I think it was Love. Love was the last love. one before they yeah, changed. Yeah, Love was the last one before it changed. Yeah, so I went down there with my grill one night, probably around 1.30 so I could set up. Man, MPD ran me out of there so fast. Dude that had a little hot dog chili guard called, called the police on me. You know what I mean? Yeah, he had to get you up out of there. You was his I competition. Was, I was kind of pissed because I just spent like, you know, food was way cheaper than that. Man. Food was mm-hmm. way cheaper. Like you can get a, a a case of ribs back then for like seventy five dollars. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, I uh, bought me a case of ribs, and I just wanted to do that. And some, and I had some wings. Man, I seventy five for that case, and then probably about forty for the case of the chicken. I ain't get to sell none of my food. You know what I mean? I was I was I was out of some money, so I was pissed. So then I tried to you know look into the laws and everything, and it just wasn't possible. So I was like, all right, well, I didn't spend this money on this grill. I need to make my money back. So uh, I was already a barber. I said, you know what? When I'm cutting, I can't get off my feet and go get something to eat, you know, all the time. So I'm going to take the food to them. So what I did was I started going to different barber shops, hair salons, nail salons, with my grill on the back of my truck. Mm. I walk in the door. Hey, good evening, everybody. Fresh barbecue, fresh barbecue, ribs, chicken, just like that. You know, next thing you know, people are like, what's the price? Man, come on outside, come check me out. And people will come outside. Next thing you know, I develop relationships with people. Um, from that, I would give my people my name and number. I didn't even have any business cards. People would call me and they say, Hey, I got a I got a daughter that goes to Riverdale where I, we want to throw a graduation cookout. Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Sure. Uh next one, I got a son graduating from DeMatha. Can you do a graduation cookout? Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. we have on a small repast. We lost a family member. Can you can you cook for that? Sure, you know what I mean. So every summer, every summer since two thousand nine, I've been jumping. You know what I mean? Yeah, every that's that's crazy. That's sweet. Hey, you know that's exactly how I got into catering too. Like I really? shit you not. So the same thing, sim- same thing, similar happened to me. I cooked for a couple people, mm-hmm. right? And they was like, "Damn, that was really, really, really good." So then they was just like, "Hey, I need you to cook for this." So I need you to do. That's when I was doing catering. Like I had a commercial kitchen and a whole nine. Mm-hmm. But since now I'm doing, you know, the personal and the private stuff is all small scale. But I did the same thing. I had had barbershops that I was going to. I was doing lunch for them. The whole mm-hmm. now that's what's up. That's mm-hmm. cool. that's and that's how I start, man. You know, that's definitely how I started. And and from there, you know, I, I won't lie to you. I, I still haven't got boozy with it. You know, like I'm still a person can call me and say, hey. I mean, I do got a, a, I won't go lower than two slabs. Like, I'm not about to fire up my grill for nothing less than two slabs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You because know, yeah. I got something, I got a small enough grill where I can throw it on there. I'm not using a lot of charcoal. And, you know, that's one of the reasons I like to cook because I can just, I can throw barbecue on there and let it roll. You yeah, know, I ain't got to sit moving. there and, 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 and monitor it. You know, and after a while, you've been doing it for so long, you know a lot of tricks in the trades or what it is you're doing. Right, right. That's what's up. So, next question I have for you. What would what do you wish your younger self knew about your current professions now? Um, for barbering, I wish I knew that it was as competitive as it is. Um, and I also wish that uh, you know I I I I I just knew more. You know what I mean? I wish I was in a position where. I could continuously, I wish I would have went to school more than anything. Like I would have really told myself, you know, go to a white school, you know, learn how to cut straight hair because Mm. cutting black hair is pretty easy, but Mm. your money really comes in with straight hair. You know, the average white client is paying 50, 60 or more a service. Whereas in, you know, I'm not, at this point in my career of barbering no more, but I see it in my shop with younger barbers and even established barbers, like where people are still trying to negotiate the price of having to pay a, for a cut at $20 versus me having a $36 price for my entire shop. You know, you'll get a, um, you get a, you get a lot of people that come in. So I, I wish I would have knew more knowledge, you know what I mean? And right. that's just as the barber, but on the business side, I wish sometimes I would have went a different route, to be quite honest with you. You know what I mean? And 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 uh, I wish that 
owners would have told me not to get into it. Let me say, let me just be honest. Like, I love my craft. I love it. You know what I mean? I love cutting hair. But I have dreams and ambitions. And as of today, as a 35-year-old man, barbering is not going to get me where I want to get to. It's not going to allow me to retire the way I want to. Mm. Um, And shop ownership is a lot more difficult than I thought. Um, Being a barber owner is like being in a frat. You know, um, I can see that. I can see that. And and being a barber, you're a nobody unless you're that somebody in your shop. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's 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 very difficult. So if I would have, if my younger self could have told me something about it, I would have tried. I want to, like I say, one I definitely would have went to school, and that's just for being a barber. Because you can make a lot of money as a barber, but when it comes to ownership, that's kind of, that's something that's kind of totally, totally different. You know, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, this profession is forever changing. It's still changing, and you know, it's it's getting tougher. You know what I mean? Uh, especially with us still recouping slash still going through COVID. Um, yeah, that most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. You know, you're not the not the cut You're not the only person who I've heard that is a barber. I've, you know, my main barber is a good friend of mine, and one of my buddies from when I was in the military, he cuts hair, mm-hmm. and they both said they'd be like, "Yeah, this is, the, you know, this this ain't gonna be forever." Like I just remember growing up, and like the barbers was like old, like they had been cutting hair like 25, 30 years, and you know, sh- you know, I mean, it, it seemed like shit was sweet. It seemed like now. You know, you see a lot of barbers come in, you know, maybe our age. And then after that, you know, at that point, they've been doing it maybe 10, 15 years. They kind of looking for another move or or they looking to own some shit. So it, it's, it's funny that you said that because, uh, you know, again, to go to my folks, they left and started their own joint. Like just a little salon plaza, just a booth. It's just them two. But even still, my barber be like, you know, always thinking about doing something else. And I just be like, damn, bro, you ain't. You look like you're cashing out to me, but um, you know, I, I get in that aspect of like he be they be in the I be in the shop, your Fridays, your Saturdays, your Thursdays, them y'all late days, you know what I mean? So you so it's like I mean unless it's, things will change, you really only really you really only get to enjoy yourself in the middle of the week, where it's slower. But you know me, I come in Friday Eve, I'm trying to get that cut, and then you got ten people after me, and it's six seven o'clock in the evening, you know what I mean? So you got to you know you got to make that money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get what you're saying, though. And, you know, barbers are, we're the least respected. You know what I mean? People don't care about our time. People don't care about our livelihood. You will see in this profession how selfish people are. You know, you'll be like, cancel all your appointments for the day. Hey, I'm not feeling well. Hey, so when you think you're going to be back at the shop? Nigga, I'm sick. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Facts. I'm worried about Facts. getting no Facts. money right now. I'm trying to make yeah, sure I'm yeah, good, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, people, yeah. people are very selfish. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll, you'll really realize how selfish people are. Um, when can I come in? When can I come in? You know, uh, I need a cut. I need a, I need a cut. I need a cut. Oh, I'm going out of town. Can you squeeze me in? Can you do this? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, hey, well, I'll tell you what. Call this client. Tell them I pay for their cut, too, so, so I can get their spot. Yeah, hey, I had somebody do that to me, and I was yeah. like, he, he was like, he's like, hey, the band before you, so he said he'd pay for your cut if you can go first. I was like, he paying for my son cut too, and he was like, well, nah, he can do it. I was like, well, he can wait his ass in the car, and See then that? and then he come in, you know, he let him in while he's sitting in the chair. And I was like, then he said like had a little attitude. I'm like, nigga, are you mad because you want cut in front of me? You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> barbershop be that, that shit do yeah. be it do be barbershop terrible. culture is something different boy. so let me let me tell you my thing so let me tell you thing so i try i try to be a good i try to be a good patron you know what i'm saying i try my best <laughs> i try to book i try to book my haircut at least a week in advance to me two weeks is pushing and shit can happen and then you must run and forget so i'll i'll use a little app hey can you get me in this time me and you know me and my son here i usually try to go a little bit after you know my son get home from school just try to get in you right. know what I'm saying, but it's like it be the customers sometimes, man. I I, I think we don't really take take a, a account of that. Like my, for a long time, my barber used to like I pull up, I'll be like I'm outside. So it's COVID, so it's mm-hmm. like you know unless you're getting a haircut, you ain't coming in. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So, you know, we I sit in my truck and wait. You know, haircut hair appointment is at five or six. It's at six. So 545, I'm in the parking lot. Like 555, I hit him like, hey, I'm outside homes. He'd be mm-hmm. like, give me like seven minutes. I'm like, seven minutes really mean like 20 minutes. Bro. You know what I'm saying? But then he broke it down to me. Well, then he, he changed this thing where he started enforcing cancellation fees. Mm-hmm. So it's like, look, this is this is how much the haircuts are. You know what I'm saying? The prices, whatever. You know what I'm saying? The price is different for me because I've been cutting my hair for like eight years. Uh, but and if you can't make it and you don't call within a certain time, yeah, you it's, it it's like half of it. It's like a half cancellation fee. So then I right. asked and I was like, so I was like, damn, bro, I feel like I'm just like suffering. So then he was like, look, He's like, every time you got to wait in the car is because two or three niggas coming late yeah. and one person canceling and I got to squeeze. And he was like, so now to smooth things out, this is where I'm going. He was like, you just keep doing what you're doing. This really doesn't pertain to you. Mm-hmm. So I yeah, said, I think one one or two motherfuckers can fuck your whole schedule. The whole schedule. So, I, so I can respect that. Yeah, definitely. And it, and it, and it goes like that. Um, it's crazy because I got a couple clients They'll come into the shop and they'll be like, uh, say they got a three o'clock appointment and they they get there at 2.15. They just want to kick it. I still keep my shop open. I make sure that people are socially distanced, but I like that shop atmosphere. You know what I mean? I like the people coming in, talking trash, mm. talking about the game. You know, I offer we offer liquor at my, at my shop. We sell cigars at my shop. So I, I like that vibe. You know what I mean? Mm. We all laughing and joking and everybody's in there together. So I had a client of mine come early. Like I say, his appointment was at three. So he wanted to show up at like 2.15. I was cutting somebody at the time and they supposed to be out of the chair by 2.30. But my 2.30 didn't get there to 2.42. So I'm sitting there telling my client, I'm like, see, you always think it's me. You think I'm playing around mm. or you think I'm cutting slow. I said, you saw the client that was here when you got here. He got out of the chair at 2.32. That put me two minutes behind. So what? Who's tripping? I said, but the next one supposed to be getting in the chair at 232, right? Right. I said, he's not showing up to 242. I said, so now I'm not going to be finished with him until got there going 312. Yep. Did you, did you get what I'm doing you know. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and, yeah. and he was yeah. like, you know, I, I never looked at it like that, man. I, he was like, I, I just thought you was in here bull driving. I said, no, nah, man. One yeah, it's it's one. always it's always people who don't know about the profession, though, that they give you the most judgment and criticism. Definitely. Honestly, man, my, my best piece of advice for that for that inconsiderate SOB that might be watching, um, you need to schedule your haircut when you ain't got nothing to do. <laughs> right. Don't schedule your appointment that. as if you may just have two hours or three hours we don't have nothing to do. Like, don't oh, schedule yeah. it like like I gotta be here at five and I gotta make dinner at six. No, bro. Yeah, that I, shit, I, dinner I, gonna I be cold. People, I'm like, hey, don't don't book me around your plans. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. anything can happen. You know what I mean? Anything can happen. All right, that's what's up. All right, so tell me about three influential people in your life and how they impacted you with all your career decisions and professions that you have. My father. I get my work ethic from my father. Okay. Um, he's definitely impacted me. I'm a junior. You know, that's my senior. Shout out to Pops. Good Shout man. Met him. Oh, yeah, yeah. We was in the garage with Pop, smoking a stove. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Shut the power. Um, man, my father, he 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 taught me how to work, man. And he taught me how to humble myself. Um, I love that man with all my heart. So I'm like, that right there is who he, he taught me how to work, you know, real talk. Um, so my father, number one. Number two, I would say uh, Jordan, Michael Jordan, Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Uh, mm. always a Wizards fan. I uh, born and raised a Wiz- uh, well, Bullets fan. Um, but Michael Jordan was just that competitive. Like, you know, I, I loved Jordan growing up as a as a fan. I watched him play. Um, I really remember the 92, 93 championship. I remember the 95, 96 championships and that competitive edge. Like, so it was kind of like me. I grew up playing sports, played basketball and football my whole life. So, Always want to be competitive, you know. Always want to play at a high level. Um, That's what's up. And and shout out to him, you know, Jordan for that because I mean everybody wanted to be like Mike growing up. At least I did, you know. I, I didn't grow up a a Kobe fan. 
uh, because I felt he tried to take Jordan's spot while Jordan was still that guy. You know what I mean? And then after MJ left the league, I was like, then you got LeBron coming in. So I was a LeBron fan because I was like, Kobe trying to be too much like MJ. And there's only one MJ. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, um, and then the third person, I'd have to say AI. Uh, AI, AI, man, you know, Chuck, like short but gritty. You know what I mean? Always in the mix. Uh, had heart. Dude had a heart of a line. You know what I mean? No matter t- anytime he stepped on the court. You know he meant business. You know what I mean? It's not a person that played with or against him that couldn't tell you he wasn't a dog. So it's like any and everything I try to do, you know, I, I try to have my work mentality, which I get from my father, which means, you know, just work, 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 work. Um, number two, that, that that competitive nature, you know what I mean, to try to make yourself known. And number three, try to have a, a heart like a line, like AI, you know what I mean? So That's what's up. Um, if I could add a fourth, I'd have to say Shaq, man. Ah, oh, hey, Shaq is my man, dog. A lot of people don't know I how many Shaq, hands though. Shaq has. His, how many, how many, uh, how many graphs he has on? Like Shaq has a lot of shit, especially when it comes to business, like owning businesses and shit like that. Papa John, I think he has like Coles and like a whole bunch of other shit. Like a lot of people, yeah. He's just a good person too, he man. Is. He's, He's just a really, good person, yeah. really. Yes. Like I, I like you see them videos of him. In person. You see them videos of him. He be like buying kids shit and all that. I don't I don't mm-hmm. be thinking he be doing it for the clout. I just think that's, that's just, just who he is. Him. You know what I'm saying? It's him, man. Do y'all watch Shaq Life? Well, I watched a little bit of it. I think I caught an episode when his son was was wrapping up uh one of his high school games, and he said if if he dropped twenty five, he gave him like five grand or something like that. That's the last mm-hmm. one I saw. Yeah, yeah, man. You know, Shaq Shaq is a beast, man. I actually, um, I have a I have a business coach. I also got a therapist too. Um and Shout out uh, the therapy. And uh I can't remember which one it is. I know it's been a bunch of people, but a lot of people tell me I got too much going on. You know what I mean? As far as running the barber shop and you know, owning the barbecue business and working seven days a week. And I said, Man, y'all don't tell Shaq that. And I said, Don't no, granted, he got way more money than me, but mm. y'all ain't telling this man not to be a sheriff. Which he is. Y'all ain't telling this man not to work on TNT. Y'all ain't telling him not to be on the board member of a Papa John's. Y'all ain't telling him not to, you know what I mean, uh uh invest in Walmart. Cause you know, he still got the shoes in Walmart and stuff like this. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if that black man can run four or five businesses and wear six, seven different hats, why can't that be the same? You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like everything comes down to a balance. You know what I mean? Everything comes down to a balance. I like it, bro. So, um, so tell me, man, what's something about your industry that surprised you lately? Which one? Barbering? Um, Either one. Either one. Okay. Or both. What has surprised me about barbering? Big surprise. It's not the same. And I don't, I don't know if it's our area. I just don't see it going back to where it used to be. I don't think the shop atmospheres or shops will be the same no more because of COVID. So many people want to be by themselves yeah. because of egos, owner egos, barber egos. So many people don't want to work in shops because of safety reasons with COVID. People want their own studio suites. Um, you know, um, I think it's going to forever be like that. I really yeah, do. So, um, so we were having, I don't mean to cut you off, but we were having a conversation about this last episode about barbershop mm-hmm. culture specifically. Mm-hmm. And do we think it's changed? We both agree that it has changed, but we don't know how much it's changed. And you're giving us an insight right now on how 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 difficult it is right now being in the barbershop. Because as kids, we look forward to going to the barbershop. Yeah. Just especially as younger. You know what I mean? We yeah. look forward to going to the barbershop and listening yeah. to the conversations. Yeah. Or even as we got older and we were young men and like in our 20s and stuff, we look forward to go to the barbershop and get them. And pair of socks to see whatever DVD CDs, or CDs that they selling or oils or incense air fresheners, or incense. air fresheners car stuff. You had that one dude that was working on everybody's car and all he had yep. was some duct tape, a fucking butter knife, and a lemon. Like hey, we that still got that UTP, not- man. Shout out UTP. We still got all that. Come on, all right, bet. All right, all right. still there. But you know that the, the piggyback off that, man. Um uh, my barber told me he said, I because I asked him too. I, I, I said, bro, like y'all feel like y'all recoup? And he said, Hell no. Nah. He said, bro, he said, I used to have niggas come in here every week 
getting the full shebang, getting the full, getting everything, getting getting mm-hmm. the hot towel. You know what I'm saying? Get, getting the joint, whole joint tightened up. And now because they, you know, they stuck home, they teleworking and all that. Now they didn't go on YouTube and start figuring shit out on their own. So as he was like, mm-hmm. now some of these people who was regulars just come in when you know maybe the shit that got out of hand yeah, or it's yeah. just a special ceremony. So he was like, definitely. Like I remember when it like this was what 20, 2020 in the summer, my bob mm-hmm. was cutting my hair on my deck, and he was cutting my hair in my garage because the shop was shut down. Mm-hmm. And then and then you know with these variants and all that, man. I mean, I, honestly, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that, 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 your, that your shit is open and you can still kind of operate. You know what I'm saying with a sense of normalcy, bro. But I think it'd be a while, man, before you know people just really, really pulling up, crowd up in the shop. You know, just doing what men do. You know what I'm saying? I always tell my I tell my son, I said, I can't wait till you're old enough to go on your own or by yourself. Mm-hmm. So he can go and he can go and get that journey. Stuff, yeah. Like I was going to the when I was it's young, like a rite of passage for yeah, a young yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I grew up in Montgomery County, so it's like, you know, and it's just just me and mom. So she just give me the little money I need, and I will walk to the barber shop right. and do my thing and go find, you know, find my barber. Who was going to be that guy that was going to cut my hair all through high school? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That was an achievement in life Hell to have yeah. one barber that you always went. You to. ain't want to be flip flopping. Nah, right, nah, right, nah. right. Hell you don't want no. flip flop, dog. Hell no. Most definitely. That's crazy. That's good though, man. But um, man. as far as uh, with the barbecue industry, something that uh has surprised me lately is uh. how difficult it is to make business relationships in this county which kind is of it, makes is, me, do you think it's just this county or would you say you period do you think it's just people i don't think it's people um i'm 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 a firm believer that uh one hand washes the other you know it's all about who you know yeah you know what i mean i think certain paperwork get pushed for certain people I think uh, certain things are allowed for certain people. Mm. Um, you know, I've just seen, I've been down so many closed roads and had to U-turn and go do something else just to survive with food, you know? Mm, um, facts. And then even still, like, you know, I would say probably for a year or two, I've been looking to to get into a kitchen, you know? So a lot of them are definitely full. Um, but then I'm sitting there looking at like, you know what? All right, well, let me just go ahead and do my own spot. Of course, it's going. It's going to cost a chunk of change, but when you realize all the stuff you got to go through, the permits and this and this and that, you're sitting there looking at it like, damn. By the time you finish, man, you probably about it between seventy and a hundred thousand. Is it worth it? You know what I mean? And then you know, uh, I would say other counties like Montgomery County, uh, Anne Arundel, they allow roadside vending. You yeah. Know what I mean? So Prince George's County doesn't allow that. Uh, it's it's really surprising to me how tight Prince George's County is. And it all has to do with money. Prime example, um, I stay on eBay, stay on Facebook Marketplace. One man's trash is another man's treasure. I'm always looking for like the best deal. Mm, facts. So, I'm, I'm right there with you. So I came up, and I know I'm not the only person that has come up with this, but I saw, and what I wanted to do was purchase one of those shipping cargo containers that y'all see on those big mm-hmm. industry boats that you know do a lot of our trade yeah um, these yeah. everything like that connexes yeah i wanted to purchase one of those you know on ebay the cheapest i saw one was probably like forty five hundred dollars and i wanted to rent some some land private property from mm-hmm. somebody in prince george's county i figured out the park that land or whatnot and I'm glad I didn't pull the trigger on getting the trailer because uh, I'll probably been stuck with it. Or I mean, I would have made it work to the best of my ability. But anyway, right, right, right. I wanted to get the trailer, forty five hundred dollars, and I wanted to turn it into a commercial kitchen for me. You know what I mean? And hell, Rick could have came through there and looked out, did used it. You know, I wanted to literally get it licensed by the county for me to be able to food prep, want to cook, and real talk, I was just and all that. I was going to put some picnic tables up and tell people come get barbecue on the weekends, you know, because mm-hmm. uh, Monday through Friday, I'm in the shop. So I take this plan down to the county, right? 
and um, the county, I talk, I, I ain't gonna say no names, but the county says, uh, you know, we're we're actually having a meeting about that. Uh, we've already had our first meeting about that. Um, as far as you know, people being able to use those type of shipping containers for living and uh, businesses and, and and things like that. However, we haven't passed that bill for the county to vote on it yet. Wow. I would hate for you to invest in it and we don't ever pass that bill. And then on top of that, if you put all of this money into it, whoever, you know, does your kitchen in there and sets everything up for you, it will be illegal because we can't permit it right now. We're not mm. permitting it right now. So then we would fine you if yep. you decide to do it anyway. Do it anyway. Mm. And yeah, we just haven't got there yet. I said, why am I not like, surprised? I'm like, they, they, they doing it in Baltimore. I'm like, everybody's doing I'm it. Like they doing it in Montgomery County. County. Everybody's doing it. It's they a place it that Jessup. I. Yeah, there's places said, that you can go by right now. They've been in the same spot for five years. I'm like, what's wrong with Prince George's same... County? That's crazy. I seen I seen something on the news, man, where it was a temporary joint. It was a, a lady, a Caucasian persuasion. And she had a quad con and she made a restaurant out of it. And they dropped that joint right down in, in Navy Yard, right in the grass. And it was there for a couple <laughs> months. I'm like, Connex is all the move, though. I want to so, get one. People I use those that. for everything. I started looking at it like it's either this or it's this. Yeah, it's one or the other. It might be yeah. both. Probably both. You know, yeah, um, but both. that was one of the biggest surprises to me in um, in our industry, and that was as recent as uh, twenty twenty one, mm. maybe twenty twenty in the summer, because uh, and you know because of that, like I don't I don't know how much more I want to do with food for real. You know, I don't want nobody having that much grip on me and nothing I do. You feel me? Right, you know what I mean. So to a point where they they saying, "Hey, you can't do this. Hey, you can do that." This reason I became an entrepreneur in the first place. You know what Absolutely. I mean. Take my own set of rules and, and work how I want to work and how I see fit. Right. You know what I mean. Like we we all grown here. Like I, yeah, you know the, this county, it's uh, it's 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 tough, man. It's tough. The property tax is high too. That too. That too. <laughs> Okay, so look, man. If you were if you were sitting next to a leading expert in your field, either one, what would what would you want to ask him? What's the exit strategy? I would ask them mm. what's the exit strategy. That's different. You know? I like that. I didn't expect because that. I like that. I don't care what it is you win. You get tired of doing it at some point in time. You know, um, you still they ain't, they ain't saying that you don't love to do it. It's, I'm sure it's time LeBron wake up like, damn, I don't want to go to the gym today, but I'm the king. I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? So I would say, like, what's the extra strategy? Like, when you get to where it is you want to be, what's next? You know, because you, you don't want to fall back off. You want to still maintain where you are, or at least you want to retire or do something that'll keep you where you are. So um, and then I would also ask them how to get through the difficulties. I don't think a lot of people prepare enough for the for the for the failures you know no matter what you're doing business you're going to have a lot of hiccups you know what i mean i would also ask like what do you i would ask i would ask a lot of questions and i don't ask questions you know what i mean if there's one thing i know now is not necessarily to ask questions i want to know what it is i'm not supposed to know tell me that can you tell me what it is i'm not supposed to know mm -hmm. you know what i mean because then that would help me a lot more right. you know vice versa you thinking you know everything tell me what i don't know i give you i give you a prime example and my um, this past summer, the air conditioning went out of my shop. Mm. We were without air for a month, a mm. month, and it was three weeks out of that month where it was ninety five every day. I had three barbers say, "I'm not coming back to work until the air is working. I'm gonna go cut home, cut at home, or I'm gonna do house calls." I'm pissed. Shop don't make no money from them. And then I got to come out of my pocket to pay for those chairs. So I call my management company. Now, in my lease agreement, so what I know is that it's my job to maintain the HVAC system. That means I got to get it serviced. 
that means I have to uh, do anything like if it breaks, I, not like completely breaks. That means, you know, when it needs new air filters, I got to do that. When it needs to get service, I need to do that. If it needs some tweaking, I got to pay for that. Just regular maintenance. Regular location. maintenance. That's on like me. No big shit. No, no. Okay. That's, that's on me. So I had the company I was using come through and give me an estimate and let me know what was going on with it. They say, man, you know, this building has been here since the, I would say, 80s. You got a dinosaur of a unit. We recommend you replace it. I said, all right, well, I'm going to call my management company. That ain't on me. You know? Right. And I'm like, but what's the price of that, though? He said, oh, man, you're looking about $18,000, $20,000. So I said, what? I said, yeah, let me call management. Let me call management. Call, call management. them right now. <laughs> so I, call, call I, will, I will write a letter. Um, I call management, and they, they say, uh, oh, well, you got to take care of that. You know, wow. That's, that's on you. I said, hold my lease. I go get my lease. I said, my lease don't say that. And they said, well, if you also see here in parentheses, it says section 10, blah, 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 blah. They said, scroll to that. So I'm flipping pages. I look at the gentleman and say that if it breaks, I got to replace the entire system. Mm, so fine I'm print. The fine print, right? Jeez. So wow. I'm I'm like, I'm pissed, but it's like one of them type of things where I've been screwed so many times in business. I don't even really get mad no more. I'm sitting mm. there looking at it like, you know what? It's just another one for the books, man. This is something yeah. to know, you know. If anybody should be mad, it can't be me because I didn't know no better. Right. I started this business when I was 25 years old. I was just worried about getting in here and opening my shop. And I've learned something every year I've gone on. And I said, but this is definitely a lesson learned. Now, of course, I'm not about to sit here and let you stick me with a $20,000 bill. So I got another opinion. I go of to course. another opinion. They come back and they was like, yeah, man, we can replace your whole unit for 12. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, so now they talking 18, 20. They come down to 12. I'm like, here's where y'all put it. I ain't got money for none of this shit. So um, <laughs> yeah. I call management and I'm like, hey, one person said 20,000. Another person said 12,000. They said, well, we're going to send our people out there. So their people come out there and their people were like, yeah, he, uh, he need a new unit. We recommend him getting a new unit. So mm -hmm. management come back and say, well, our people say they can do it for you for 15. I said, hmm. I call, now I start hitting the streets. I'm like, man, I hit my man. He, he just started his own HVAC company. I call him. I'm like, man, come check this joint out for me, man. I'm like, these folks, they, they, they trying, they trying to hood with me, man. I don't, I ain't, I ain't getting no whole new unit. I can't afford it. So right. he called me. He was like, listen, all right, I'm going to tell you like this. You've got an old unit. But I'm gonna rebuild the inside for you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? He said, I'll rebuild the inside for you. I'm like, man, how much is this gonna run me, man? He said, about forty three hundred dollars I said, run it. Damn. Run it. I got that. <laughs> Quick. I said, do that. Run that. I said, but let me know what you're doing. He said, all right, all right. You familiar with old schools? I was like, yeah. He said, you know, they was 70s, 80s, you know. He said, they don't really make the parts for them no more, but they around. He mm -hmm. said something at the same time. All cars work the same. Just like all these machines work the same he says so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna build a band-aid to your problem which is your air compressor and he said your air compressor is going to be your band-aid he said i'm gonna rebuild the air compressor for you damn near mm. from scratch using some of the mm. old parts a lot of this new stuff this way we can save your unit and i said how much more time is this going to give me like out of this unit he said at the least it's going to work for another three to four years i said oh Bad, oh, run it. Good, good and, to he go. said, and he said, on a long term, it's all might not never mess up again. You just got to keep doing your daily, your, your, your yep. routinely maintenance. I was like, all right, bet. So I call management. I say, I got it taken care of. Don't worry about it. And they say, so what do you mean you got it taken care of? <laughs> None I of said, your fucking business. They, they missing out on that fucking <laughs> bad said, you, I said, like I said, I got it taken care of. We got air. Care of you. you know what I'm saying? We got air now. Point blank, period. Well, I, oh. I hope you ain't. You know what it, I said, it don't matter, the air's working, and I took care of it. Yeah. So, real talk with my lease, I'm taking that compressor with me too. Fuck them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> stand that good shit. Hey, Sweet. good shit. So, where or how do you self-educate yourself, especially with everything changing in the industry that you're involved in? Like, 
even for Barbara, and I know there's always some new clippers or some shit that comes out, or either with cooking, there's some new way of cooking or smoking or grilling or whatever. Like, how do you self-educate yourself when it comes to that stuff? First and foremost is prayer, you know, asking God for mm. guidance. Secondly is, uh, Hallelujah. Um, man, I, I network a lot. So I'd make sure I hit Barber Expos. And when I'm at mm. them Barber Expos, you know, all these guys are telling you, hey, it's my Instagram page. I follow them a lot. You know what mm. I mean? Like you said, your barber was doing the whole shebang with the hot towel, the gel, and the facial mask and all that. I would have known that if I wouldn't went to a barber battle. You know what I mean? Mm. Because when it's a barber battle, what happens is you normally got – some barber pioneers that come in and pretty much explain on a panel what it is they do, what separates them from their peers. And from there, one light bulb will go up, like, all right, I'm going to start doing that. And the next person talk, all right, I'm start doing that. So I, I, I steal a lot of information from a lot of people and I entwine it into my arsenal as far as how I can get better. And um, I, I study their moves and I implement a lot of that stuff into what it is I like to do and make it my own way. Um, that's the and same thing with cooking, though. It's the exactly the same thing with cooking. Exactly the same way so, uh, with cooking. It's everybody's made the same shit, but you just got your own flavor to it, which exactly. separates yourself from everybody else. No, that's what's up. I agree with that on that one. So um, you know, it's just it's more so about uh being on YouTube, um Instagram. They they're very, very influential to me and for me. You know, that's how I self-educate. And uh yeah. It's, it's that has been monumental to me, you know. Like a lot of these barbers or shop owners I follow, they're from different, definitely from different cities and states. Hmm. Um, but they're doing stuff we're not doing here, which is what I, what I like, you know what I mean. So, you got it's a lot of it's a lot of talents and barbers out here, and mm-hmm. it's a lot of established owners, you know what I mean. So, definitely, you always got I try to find those that are doing what I'm not doing, and I like what they're doing, and I can tell that it's working. I, I I follow that. Cool, man. Cool, cool. All right. So, what's been your most inf- influential resource? Boy, he he already answered that. Yeah, he pretty much other other than Facebook, right, and everything else. You said, is there any other influential source for for both of your professions outside the normal? Um, I say the fact that um. You know, whatever, like, I, I, I have uh, hobbies, so I'm, I'm often influenced by money, to be quite honest with you. I love to make money, um, so I'm, I'm influenced by that. Like, if I see you getting money, hey, what's how do you do that? You know, <laughs> you know, um, I'm not one of those proud type of people that's going to sit back and hate. I want to know, you know what I mean? Um, I would say me knowing that I want more, it influences me to make more money so that I can get what it is I want. Mm. And do what it is I want to do. That's what's up. You like the network. I, I, I love to, man. I love to. Mm. If it's a if it's a room full of people, man, I'm I'm gonna try to introduce myself to half of them, if not all of them. You know, well, we was rapping for like I don't know hours, hours off the first time we met, and then when I went to the crib and helped him with the hog. Shout out to that. Like we was in oh, there yeah. just rapping, and we was just bouncing shit off each other the entire time. Like, yeah. cause me, like me. I, to me, I call myself a grill master, right? But he definitely does it on a larger scale than I do, right? But we were just bouncing ideas and stuff off each other. And then, you know, like the way that I would cook pork or something that he can do to like that. So that's the type of shit I like too, like networking, mm-hmm. because you'll never know what somebody yeah. else has or whatever gems or whatever they may have. But you gain that shit for free because mm-hmm. there's a lot of people that's paying for it or charging for it. And you just gain it by just a general conversation. But no, no, that's. Then I definitely feel you on that one. That's yeah. good, man. That's good. So I, I'm gonna hit you with a curveball. So if you could start a business tomorrow, something different, what would it be? Trash. Mm, trash. 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 Mm. Give me some detail on that. Give hey, me some. Hey. Um, pandemic made me smarter. Um, they shut my shop down. I had to cut hair in my garage for two months. Food was essential. I fired up my grill. I think in two months, I did some numbers financially, paid off some major debt because I was able to pocket a lot of shit. But one of the things I realized was they were still picking my trash up every two, every Monday and Thursday. Mm. So 
one of the businesses I've been trying to get into, I would say for the last three or four years, is roll off dumpsters. Yes, my hey, and my dad does it, bro. My dad, my dad has his own truck. Shout out to Pops, Rick Snipe. My dad has his like the roll off business here. will never go away. Never go away. Somebody's mm-hmm. always remodeling in the house. Somebody mm-hmm. always needs dump dumpsters. Somebody's mm-hmm. always go- man. And yeah, you own something. And, that one, and bro. so that's two industries right there. You just did. You just did residential, and you just did real Commercial. estate. Mm-hmm. Let's talk mm-hmm. construction. You know. Let's mm-hmm. also talk trash. You know what I mean? Like that's just roll off dumpsters. But I have a cousin of mine who got like four or five dumb trucks. He's been doing it for over 30 years. He told me not to get into it unless I got my CDL. He mm-hmm. said, you might hire this guy to drive for you, but he don't get there on time or he's sick that day. He said, you need to know how to drive your own truck. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So what put a pause on that was I just haven't spent the $1,200 to go get my CDL yet. I haven't pulled that trigger to do it yet. Um, but trash. I would I would get into the trash. That's different. I like that. Hey, I ain't cool. gonna lie to you, man. TikTok be been making me want to go ahead and go be a truck driver out here on the weekends <laughs> or something, man. That shit look like it's fun, dog. Um, we just started a truck company, so that's my third business. We already um shout out. That's what's up. Congrats. What are you okay. killing, bro? Congrats. Right way trucking, uh, right way trucking services and LLC. Uh, my cousins and I, you know, uh, we have put our heads together. Like I said, I was I wanted to do the roll off dumpsters. Uh, my cousin, my younger cousin, he was like, well, I want to do the box truck. You know, he was like, we should get in the box truck and it's a lot of money in it. And I'm like, bro, I don't know nothing about no box trucking. You know, he's like, man, I'm about to quit my job. They about to make me get a vaccination. You know, he was like, I ain't trying to get no vaccination. So I'm going to get the box truck. And then he talked to his brother, who was our other partner. And he was like, man, whatever, whatever y'all want to do, I'm with it. You know what I mean? Like, but I'm not driving. I'm not driving. So, <laughs> I'm with it, but I ain't driving. He was like, so I was like, I'm like, man, you know, I already got two businesses. I'll drive here and there. I drive here and there. My other cousin was like, I'm driving full time, period. And he was like, I'll drive full time. I said, all right, let's do it. So right now, um, like I said, we just passed my state inspection a couple weeks ago. Um, right now, we just um, got a new got a new load board that we on DAT load board. So I would say we were supposed to be doing some. I was supposed to do a load tonight. Actually, after after our interview, um, but they I won't get back until too late tomorrow morning. To get my son to school, so I didn't do it. But uh, yeah, so that's my third business now, trucking. That's what's up, bro. Boy, you killing you 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 kind of you answered the last question, but I'm I'm gonna ask you just because it's on here. If 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 what occupation other than your own would you like to try? I guess you did kind of answer that. Well, no, uh, I gotta. Um, I want to. I want to do something like rocking me on TV, like what y'all doing on this podcast. I'm just tight, man. <laughs> really? You know I mean, I, I I would really like to pick other people's brains. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the podcast thing has really taken over lately. Put me on somebody's news. You know, I'm, let me. Y'all ever notice how like even here, a lot of our newscasters ain't local. Like it ain't no more Jim Vance's. It ain't no more. Uh, uh, they come from other states. Jim Browns. You know, Jim Brown with the mindful, he from here, Jim Vance with the curl. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need more local newscasters. You know what I mean? So I, I would I would I wouldn't mind being a newscaster. You know what I mean? I got but, I actually got I actually got a lot of good insight on that as far as the whole podcast thing in this area. That's actually mm-hmm. gonna tie into um our last question is do you have any questions for us? Um, yes, man. What made y'all want to do this? The podcast and and, and, yeah. and everything. I'll, I'll let him start first. All right. So originally, uh, when I first did this, it was just me. Um, mm-hmm. I started this in the pandemic, two two thousand twenty twenty, uh, mm-hmm. May no June twenty twenty. Um, I was doing Instagrams, you know, regular Instagram, and I worked downtown, working at the Smithsonian. Okay. And take the train every day. I've been taking the train every day for like 10, 15 years, and always see some wild shit on the train. And right. every time I would get off the train, I'd, you know, pick my phone. I'd be walking. I'd be like, Captain's Law. And then just be like, let me tell you about this goofy-ass nigga on the train, do 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 Or let me tell you about this little journal shoes was leaning, do 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 And I was doing it. I probably did it for, like, four years. And mm-hmm. not even realizing, like, people was loving it. 
like to the point where the podcast thing really started to say like bro you should start a podcast bro you should start it and i didn't know shit about nothing you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i ain't know where to start you know what equipment where to broadcast it you know who my audience was what my niche was. i didn't know none of that i just knew that you know i got a gift for the gab and i'm goofy so i can do yeah. it and um but then i kept putting it on the back burner man and was you know looking for new jobs and shit and kept getting denied and i was really down my wife was like start the fucking podcast you need to find something to do you know what i'm saying because yeah, at this at, at this Not time you know oh yeah yeah absolutely absolutely my, my number one fan um and you know at this time you know i was doing the motorcycle thing you know but i wasn't right. i was i uh, yeah yeah i used to race for real yeah yeah i used to race I had a cousin that race what's his name uh they call him trini um marcus trini that's yeah. my man <laughs> Damn, hey. small world. He know me. Trinity wild me. ass. <laughs> I used to ride, used to ride with that nigga all the time. I, I, still, yeah. I, I just sold my bike. So, I mean, I was For just real. there last year. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, ride, I ride a Harley, man. I'm trying to get one, man, but that, that Harley money, you know. Hey, bro, come on, come on out here with me, man. Come on out here with I, me. I'm bro. trying to get some. I, you know, initially, I, I wanted to I wanted to glide and all that. I was like, man, bro, I, yeah, I, yeah. I just need a commuter, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I ain't I tripping off. Some, I just do some apes on my glide, man. For real? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get one. But um, so then, um, Trini, geez, you know, so um, I was doing it, man. And, you know, I put the podcast out. There was a lot of support in the beginning. Them first, like, 15 episodes, man, I was getting, you know, 100, 200 views, downloads per, per joint. Mm -hmm. and then i and then i started trying to like expand i, I said well let me start doing youtube it was just audio at first i started doing youtube and then i was using the gopros gopros cutting off mid recording so i'm like mm. Shit. you know what i'm saying then i was like all right well i gotta figure out what i'm gonna edit on so i was like now let me go drop this money on final cut pro then i gotta go to youtube learn how to edit and then it just started turning into i was doing so much that when it came time to promote it i didn't have i didn't have no energy left you know what i'm saying right, so right. Then it's like I put like 40 more episodes out, man, that people wasn't really listening to, you know. So um, at that point, man, you know, um, I was, you know, just kind of networking with other podcasters. And I was on another podcast that was here. Mm -hmm. And um, um, my only thing with the podcasters that are here, no disrespect to them, but everybody talking about the same shit. Mm. It's, it's relationships. Yeah. And that no diss to that, but that's easy. You know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Get on here and talk about what what ladies don't do for you, and what men don't do for you, and and like some reality TV drama shit. That's easy. That's why. That's why. It's, that's why it's reality TV. That's why it's popping. Real Housewives of this and Ready to Love and all that. It's drama. People love Real drama. Housewives of Saratoga, 2023. But when I you think. really get on, when you really mm -hmm. get on, and you just kind of talking, you know what I'm saying? With with a businessman like yourself, entrepreneur or or this person who want to talk sports or this person who want to talk D DIY or, or, you know, raising your kids or some shit like that. It's kind of like, yeah, we know that's good information, but it's not, it's not grabbing me. So it take, it take a little longer to get there mm -hmm. and uh, podcasting. It's a, it's a long road, man. Like you got to be able to record a hundred episodes that nobody, that nobody will listen to. Wow. Because at that point you didn't, you didn't, you didn't work out all your, you worked out all your kinks you got a groove going you know what i'm saying your equipment is whatever your equipment is is it's been working for you mm -hmm. um you know you go out and get a co-host you know what i'm saying I, I bought rick on uh what about five or episodes ago five mm -hmm. or six episodes ago i said look i can't do this shit by myself nigga you know rick was calling me talking to me about my shit to the point mm -hmm. where i was just like come on board i was like it sounded like this nigga trying to get on you know what i'm saying <laughs> So I waited. I waited to about. I, I wasn't. Let's be clear. I waited to Christmas, and I was like, "Bro, what you gonna do?" And you know, and, and he been he been killing this shit ever since. Definitely opening my eyes and really taking the weight off or off my shoulders for some mm -hmm. shit that I you know that I may not that I may not see you know as far as guest graphics ideas. Period. You know, what I mean, fresh ideas. So, um, as far as like the monetizing aspect, man, you you, you got to be up there, man. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's as far as being up there and not being a prior celebrity or some shit like that, like it's different. Mm -hmm. If I used to rap in my 20s and I come out and make a podcast, I'm going to have 100,000, you know, uh, uh, fans off bucks. Mm -hmm. But when you're nobody, mm -hmm. got to grind, bro. It's just grind. like you said, you got to go out here. You got to try to set up a little stand, have some people try your shit. You know, mm -hmm. I got to go out here and 
put a little clip on TikTok here and there, you know, yeah. get in there, join and engage with some folks on Twitter, start tagging people and shit. So um, it's a slow road, man, but I, I, I've, I've enjoyed it, man. I've enjoyed the growing pains um, and the, whatever the future success is. Yeah, that's what's up, man. What y'all, what y'all drinking tonight, man? Uh, we we got some Stranahan's. I don't know if this was my best buy, but uh, yeah, Stranahan single malt whiskey. Okay, okay, it ain't bad. Trini, man, hey, look, Trini, wow, man, we we look. I roll with Trini. Look, I knew Trini when he rolled on the street, and yeah. we, used to, we used to get in his ass because he came out. He wasn't wearing no gear. I used to be the gear Nazi. Okay, so I was okay. like, "Bud, I was like, where your leathers at? We used to be tan hair, yes, up, man." And uh, he was out there, John, with with some sneakers on and, and some wide leg jeans, bro. I'm like, Slim, I'm like, you fall hit this ground, you're gonna be getting the skin graft, man. And then we made our way to the try. I know his whole him his whole, his whole crew, all okay. of us rolled together. I asked him, be like, hey, you know Boogie? He know me. Yeah, 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 definitely. He he, he mad he mad that I sold my bike. Oh man, he probably would have bought it from me. Nah, 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 nah shit. Yeah. He, he got he got yeah. a lot of money in here. I mean, I had BMW. Okay, okay. And, um, but that thing was old, man, and um, it just couldn't. You know, once you start racing, man, the game changed, the money changed, you know, the fun changed. Mm. That's, you know, if you ain't got that money to back it up, you know, them track days was different. You know what I'm saying? You just spend your little $250, you go out there and have fun. You go race, that shit like $1,250. You know what I'm saying? On track? Yeah. Oh, you, trust me, it, it, track, it track is life. You, you know go saying? out that joint, you go out that joint, and let's say you're gonna do a race weekend, you know, up, up, up at Summit. That's where we was going. That's all West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, that's that's okay. that's that's our home track. And you go up that joint and say you want a race. Let's say you're gonna do four races. Mm -hmm. That's that's three, that's almost four hundred right there. That's okay. just paying for the races. Then you're gonna need then you're gonna need your fresh set of tires, you know what I'm saying? Whatever tires you're running, that's that's four something right there. We already we already at nine. We ain't talk about gas. Whether you running regular gas or you running MR12, we ain't talk about the gas you put in your vehicle to drive. We ain't talk about the food you got to eat. We ain't talk about it if you fall. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's just minimum. And then you talk about doing that shit once, twice a month. Yeah, I'm gonna ride out there one time, man, so I can see how it is on the track. I ain't hey, racing, I went out there one time. He and, came out that joint, seen out that joint, sweating my ass off. I got the experience of my lifetime. For real, I, I was out there for five minutes. We was already trying to take somebody back to the hospital because they didn't crash. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my man yeah. crashed, man. Yeah, he had to get back. So I had to help and drive somebody else's vehicle back and get back. Shit, Trini, Trini fucked himself up that day. That same mm -hmm. day was it? That same day? Yeah, he fucked some. He fucked himself up. He failed too. He failed that day too. So it was just wow. like, God damn, like this track life is no bullshit. But it's fun and it's it exciting. Like I used to do motocross as a kid. Okay. So I didn't do the straight shit. I did the dirt shit. So I, I no, I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed driving up there, hitting the track, especially you know, to support my homeboy and you know his crew and yeah, walk yeah, around, yeah. learning shit. You know what I mean? Me, I'm a, I'm a sponge too. So when it comes to learning shit, like I'm, I'm in it. You know what I mean? So like, mm -hmm. but I'm a hands-on type person. Like I can't sit. I, I would prefer to go out, touch my hands, read, talk, have a conversation, rather than reading the book. I got you. Yeah, but, yeah. Okay, That's man. Well, look, man. This is a great fucking conversation, man. So we're Thank gonna God. dress this. We're gonna dress this shit up. We're gonna promote the shit out of it tomorrow, and it's gonna come out Tuesday. Okay. Six p.m. Well, the audio will be out Tuesday at midnight, and the YouTube will be a premiere uh, the same Tuesday at six p.m. Okay. Well, send me the details so I can, you know, post it for y'all, post it for me, and uh, you know, let all our listeners hear, listen to it. Absolutely, mm -hmm. man. So we're gonna end this right here, man, and we'll we'll talk to you on the sidebar, man. I'm Rob. This is Rick, Captain's Log Podcast and YouTube show, Mr. Dennis Ross. Oh, real quick, man, go ahead and get the people your social media handles, man, so they can holler at you. Okay. Uh personal is at Dennis underscore Clinton. My personal IG is at Dennis underscore Clinton. Uh barbershop IG is at UTP barber spa uh that's utp barber spa uh for the barbecue company it is at b period e period company uh once again that's at b period e period company um other than that man y'all be able to reach everything all my other blogs and everything the facebook and everything via from from the instagram account um you ever need some barbecue let me know hit me up 
you know, need a fresh cut, hit me up. Want to talk some business ideas, investing, hit me up, you know. That's what's up. All right, y'all. Okay, man. All right, y'all. Copping out.